So since we're reminiscing, do you remember the first time you heard yourself on the radio? I do. And where were you? Were you together? We were, we were driving to Chicago and we heard Vow. On the way back from Chicago. On the way back from Chicago. And it was played on one of the rock stations here in uh we we were, I don't even what station At R.E.M. Was, but, Didn't we come and see R.E.M. here? Yes, we came down to see a R.E.M. show, a big show, like maybe the United Center, someplace huge, and and we're driving back to Madison, and uh, it came on, and we turned it up to stun volume in the car, and we were just screaming, you know, it, it sounded amazing, you know, you've even though you hear a song a million times in the studio by the time it's mixed and mastered, when you hear it on the radio and you're juxtaposed around other artists. Um, it just gives you a whole adrenaline rush because you're out there in the world and it's, uh, it's just a different perspective of how you hear the song. So it's a real thrill. still is uh, for me too. When I hear stuff I've worked on on the radio, it's great. Can you uh, compare it to anything for those of us who will never sex? have a song on the radio? Oh, orgasms. <laughs> nice. Everyone is starting a band right now. <laughs> happening on the way out um so i mean you're all icons in your own right i think shirley's the only one that's actually gotten an award for it. well <laughs> I deserved know if that's true actually <laughs> but um I, I mean butch is the most well well awarded person in this room mm-hmm. probably being of that stature who do you look up to for inspiration for guidance oh my god I mean, all our musical heroes, I guess. I mean, all the women I fell in love with when I was really young, I've been really lucky that they have continued on, had amazing music careers into their 70s, all of them. And and that is, you know, representation is everything, you know, because when I was younger, I was told that, you know, once I hit 30, it'd be all over for a woman in the music industry. And then I watched my heroes like Patti Smith and Chrissy Hind and um, Debbie Harry, and they've all had these phenomenal careers and they still are working women, you know, and we just toured with Blondie a couple of years ago. And, you know, I was watching Debbie Harry on stage. She's 72 years old and she still has a really full life and an incredible career. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. She's 20 years older than me. I already thought I was old at 52, you know, in the music industry, that's really rare. Mm. But seeing my one of my heroes up there at 72 i'm like woo! i don't have to give up i can keep going <laughs> hell yeah who told you that by the way that your career would be over by 30 because the media you know oh my God. I, I think you know i mean i was a 60s baby you know so uh women hadn't really sort of secured the kind of freedoms that they have now i mean i know that women are currently battling a lot of non-freedoms but uh my generation was freer than my mom's and my granny's and those women following me are going to have a freer, you know, evolution than, you know, an experience in life than, than I, than I have. And, and, and that's thanks to people like, you know, Patti Smith and, and Debbie Harry and Chrissy yeah. Hind and even Madonna, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you actually shared a statistic that I was not familiar with um, at, I think, the She Rocks Awards ceremony where it's something like less than, What's the percentage of women that are involved in professional music? Less than... Yeah, it's something terrifying, like 3% or something, or at least that's in production. That's like less than 3% women are producers. Um, I can't remember now the statistic I quoted on that particular day. But, uh, below 16%. It below, yeah, it's, and, and that's a debatable figure. Um, yeah. But again, I think it's just because there's been a lack of representation of women as musicians. You know, there's a lot of pop stars and a lot of objectified, sexualized young women out there who sell a lot of records, but they're not necessarily what in the power seat. And by that, I mean either producers, songwriters, people that actually generate proper income, you know, that will sustain them into, into a career like Debbie Harry's. Mm-hmm. You know, to be making music at 72 is the goal, but a lot of these young women get used, much like streetwalkers get used, you know. They're beautiful and they're pretty and they go out there and they sell a lot of records for songwriters who are generally male, male back home and then they get cast aside for the next youngest model and that's what I have a problem with. I want women to have the same agency that their male counterparts do. What do you say to these women who consider you a mentor and an idol and want to change the way that the industry is and to change that statistic but they're reaching roadblocks? What is your advice to them to 
keep going. Well, of course, it's different for every woman, isn't it? And I, I mean, I, I'm always telling women to try and be careful how they represent themselves in, you know, in the in the public. You can take all your clothes off and really benefit from doing that and sexualize yourself for a very short period of time. But once you take off all the wrapping, people don't, aren't interested in the gift anymore, you know. So, again, all the women that I admire who've had these long careers have been very careful how they've parsed their sexuality, how they've parsed their their f- femininity, and they've also been writers and they've also been producers and they're all integral to the whole machine that makes the music that they present to the world. So I guess that, that, that that's kind of my advice to young women for the most part. Be smart. Use your noggin. Don't, don't just give it all away for free, you know, because people will take it. What are your thoughts, Butch, Duke, and Steve, all being fathers of daughters and just the way that the music industry is right now? Well, my daughter, Bo, is 13, and she's interested in music. Um, uh, my wife and I have not really tried to push her into it, but she's taken up piano, and she's gotten really good, and she likes to write. She is writing songs now. Um, and she's in a choir, and she likes to do musical theater and stuff like that. But you know, we're just going to let her find her path, you know. Um, but I, I've told her that many times. You have to be willing to really be honest to yourself and true and stick to your guns because you're going to find a lot of uh, really tough roads. If you, I mean, not even just in music, but in anything. And we're uh, Beth and my wife and I are really trying to empower her that she has the the knowledge and the smarts and the chutzpah to to go out and do it and not take any BS from someone and. And just to be aware of that, you know, because it's 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 tough for women and tough for girls. We're also really trying to uh, lecture her a lot on dealing with social media and bullying and how people can, you know, some offhanded comment can just sometimes completely destroy a kid because they're people can be really kids can be really mean to each other. And uh, we're just trying to really give her tools so she will be a strong. We want her to be a strong young woman when she grows up. That's amazing. Your thoughts, Duke, Steve, with your um, daughters? You know, what Shirley was saying is it's really terrifying that that uh, percentage is so low of, of women, especially behind the scenes. You know, not everybody everybody's going to be a star, but there's plenty of room for record company people and producers and, and, and mixers and all that. And I think we need to promote that end of things, too, and, and that could really help change things, make things better. Touching on the bullying part and social media, um, one of the things I love about this band is that you aren't afraid to speak your mind. You aren't afraid to take the road less traveled, maybe the counterpoint where you honestly might lose some fans. The way that people are right now, there's this culture of almost seems like people waiting in the wings on social media, lurking to wait for someone with a platform to say something that doesn't completely align with their ideas and then they just attack and troll and do you find yourselves immune to that does it affect you do you get much of it i am completely immune (laughs) (laughs) i I I I just feel like nobody has the balls to even mess with you so you must i mean i get get messed with a lot and i don't care i'm just like i mean even this morning some fan was complaining about the the fact that i had been tweeting about game of thrones and she was pissed off because she obviously wants me to tweet about something else. And I'm just thinking, you entitled brat. <laughs> you know, like, just, what's your problem? Wait, were you tweeting out spoilers? No. Oh, okay. No, she just well, didn't yeah. like the fact that she wasn't a Game of Thrones fan, so how dare I tweet about Game of Thrones? I'm like, wow, you have got this totally whacked. <laughs> and in general, that's just how I feel. It's like, I don't really care if you don't like what I say. D- just go in. I mean, I always think of the Kirk, amazing Kirk C- Cobain quote where he was like, you know, if you're, if you're a misogynist, if you're, you know, uh, uh, a racist, if you're a sexist, blah, blah, blah. He's like, we don't need you. And we don't. Nobody needs that in their life. Yeah. And so I'd, I'm quite happy to alienate people, actually. <laughs> on, that, on that tangent, when we were playing with Blondie, we played upstate New York in, uh, near Bethel. And it was an outdoor <laughs> show with like 5,000 people. And in the middle of the show, Cheryl said something. Uh, about the current president, just the politics that were going on, whatever. And it wasn't overly heavy-handed, but it was a comment. Well, some woman took offense and and came down on the aisle and just stood there and gave Shirley the finger. The, for whole, the, rest, show. the whole show. <laughs> and she kept, which, which just kind of made us Funny. rock even harder, too. Yeah. We're like, oh, yeah, you want some? Here we go. 
And and the funny thing is, she kept hitting her boyfriend to go, go up and do something. He was going, I just he just wanted to watch the show. Right. But uh, you know that that those things happen, and if she probably won't come to another garbage show, and that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Um, speaking of Game of Thrones, how are you with the ending? We're Eric and I are massive Game of Thrones freaks, and we are devastated, and not not for the reasons that it's over, but that we just were so desperately disappointed, and we've spent the whole last season gutted and moaning about it. Hmm. It's Aww. over now, Eric. Aren't we? We're out. We're free. free. (laughs) Um, Because you are so outspoken when you feel that there is an injustice, there's something wrong, and you use your platform to speak about it, how has it been just the last few days with everything that's been going on in Alabama and Georgia and uh, Missouri, Ohio? Well, my poor husband, long-suffering husband who's over there in the corner has had to deal with a raging maniac. Like, yeah. literally, I've been walking around the house going, I'm so angry! I'm so angry! Because, uh, you know, I respect the opposing view, you know, if, you, if you're allegedly pro-life. I respect that. That's your choice. Uh, nobody's asking you to go and have an abortion. Absolutely nobody is expecting you to go against your beliefs. However, the opposite side is telling me and all my people who we believe in choice for women you're foisting your beliefs on us. And that is the problem that pro-lifers just don't seem to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, and the the implications of having a baby when you're not ready or you're not able or you're not fully functional or you have no money, you have no job, no stability, the implications are insane. Now, if the system supported women who had children who aren't in a very stable situation themselves, then that would be an altogether different argument but the problem here is we have a society that doesn't want to pay for children's education doesn't want to pay single mothers for staying at home looking after their children add on ad infinitum Mm -hmm. and that is the problem and it's heartbreaking that young women in Alabama 12 years old raped and pregnant is unable to go and get an abortion I think that's criminal I really do so nobody's ever going to change my mind about this Well, obviously, a lot of us feel the same way. And uh, right now in Illinois, um, they can protect abortion rights uh, by passing the Reproductive Health Act. There was a bill back in 75 that is just outdated. It's not even enforceable, but there has been no updates here in the state. So actually, conveniently enough, when you're in town, there is a rally to save reproductive rights at 5 o'clock today, Federal Plaza on South Dearborn. If anyone wants to meet there and then just go to the RIV for the garbage show, I feel like we're going <laughs> to make a I? day of it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you tell us about the next song you're going to play? Anybody want to take up the hill, Steve? Well, it's a song by the band Big Star and Alex Chilton, and it's called 13. One other comment. Didn't Alex say that there's a bunch of versions of this, but our cover that we did years ago was a B-side on one of the tracks on version 2.0, I believe. And he said it was his favorite cover, our version. So God bless him. <laughs> 